Well, hey, and welcome to part two of the Engage project. But already we've hit our first snag, our, our first problem, the first issue we have to deal with. And that's the desks becoming a bit of a mess. <laughs> as, as you can see, uh, the desk Craig does most of his work on is actually pretty good. It's not too bad. So there's plenty of room there for a railway. But the uh, desk on my side of the office is... Um, well, not so great, really. Lots of statements and bits of work and books and computers and bags and toilet roll. Hmm. So, um, I'm going to have to get that sorted pretty quickly, I think, before we do anything else like planning this layout. Okay, that's more like it much more space. All the junk out of the way, and just everything I need. Right, so here I am, about to plan and design my Engage layout to convey sweets and chocolates all around the office. So what do I need? Well, I've got a stack of paperwork and stuff here, but I'll come on to that in a second. Um, now, I've got the stuff from the starter set, which is obviously very useful. So we've got the Class 150 here, it's still in its really nice Engage style packaging box type things, which is really cool. Um, I've bought a few random Engage wagons over the time as well, over the last several months. So I've got a nice little rail freight uh, <laughs> box van there. And I've got a BR Brown box van, just a standard box van. I've got um, bananas, <laughs> bananas truck, because I love bananas. And I've got a Graham Farish um, coal hopper as well, there you see. Just an MG hopper. An MGR hopper, I should say. And there's a particular reason I bought this, because, as I say, these were used on MGR operations, which stands for merry-go-round. And I'll come on to that later, but they are absolutely beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Just look at that. You get quite a few uh, M&Ms in one of them. They're really nice. And they're very 1980s as well, which is when I was born, it's when I, was, it's when I grew up. So they, they hold quite a special place in my heart, do those. Um, and then of course we've got loads of track. Loads and loads of track. Well, not loads, but basically this is all the track that came in the uh, starter set. And it's all the track that came in the Pico Engage starter set as well. Um, again, I'll come on to that in a second. But with the track I've got, a few wagons for testing stuff, and this paperwork, I should have everything I need to plan this layout. Right, well it's been several minutes, and I have managed to tidy everything up. <laughs> and true to my OCD form, I have tidied all the uh, Engage track and put it up all over there. And I've got everything I need over there, and I've left my laptop here because, well, to be honest, the layout, wherever it goes, however it goes, it's going to have to work around my laptop and my computer and the phone and everything else because I do work here, you know. <laughs> I do have to get stuff done. So it's got to be practical. It's got to stay out of the way of everything. Um, right, planning a layout. Well, it's quite a unique layout, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's not the typical kind of thing you find on the front of Hormy magazine, but um, I will start with this. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the Pico Set Track Engage Plan Book, and I do recommend these. They're very, very good. There's a double O gauge one as well, and they are absolutely rammed full of ideas and inspiration for layouts. And what's really nice is that they use Set Track, so they're really easy to do. I can't show you too much of that, I'm afraid, otherwise I'll get sued. However, they're very, very cheap, they're only several quid, and they are brilliant, but it's not much use to me. What was useful to me was the, um, the Starter Trek, the Starter Trek set, just here, as you can see. Pico do an N-Gage one, and they do a double O-Gage one, and I bought both ages ago. And so, with that set, added to the track from my uh, Graham Farish starter set, I've got quite a bit of Batman and quite a bit of Pico engage track to get me going, which is really, really good. So I do recommend that, and I do recommend if you're thinking of building a layout, getting 
this, picking, picking one of these up because they're really, really good. Something else you need to watch out for, uh, track plan books like this. This is the, I'll try to hold everything in shot, I'm not used to this, this angle. Uh, this is the Hornby Magazine one, I don't know when it's from, um, somebody will probably be able to tell me. Ages ago, I think. But again, it's got N-gauge and double O-gauge layouts in here. Uh, it does say... Ah, there, there we go. Discover the potential of model railways with 15 track plans for double O and N. So, again, really, really nice. Lots of different ideas, lots of inspiration. And it shows you how to set everything up and tells you what you need. Dead, get, dead, dead good. But, useless. <laughs> well, not that's maybe that's a bit harsh. It's no good for me because what I'm doing is really quite unique. You know, we are building a fit for purpose model railway in a set defined space. It's got to work its way around things, and basically, we're not going to find in anything, are we? Or are we? This brings me on to my final book. Again, I can't show you too much because of breaching copyright. But this is a book on merry-go-round operations. The uh, keen railway enthusiast out there will have recognised the coal sector logo just there, which again is on my little, um, if you can just see it, on that little hopper there. Oh yes. Oh yes. So the reason I'm looking at this is because basically what we are building, what we're setting up, is a merry-go-round layout. Now it's not a fun fair. It's a very, very fancy name for a, well, it's not that fancy, for a train, a service, a freight service that basically never stopped. It would, if I just get my pad of paper and pen, here we go, here we go. He's got his pad of paper and his Sharpie. I can change the world with this. Basically, you'd have a power plant over here and then you'd have a coal mine over there. And, okay, and you would have a railway that did like a loop and it went all the way around like that. That's basically merry-go-round. That's basically a merry-go-round circuit. The train would come into the coal mine, pick up the coal, leave the coal mine, go halfway across the country, go to the power plant, drop off all the coal and then go all the way back and pick up some coal and then go halfway across the country and go to the power plant and drop it off and then go all the way back. You get the idea. It's called merry-go-round. I really do like using this. I think I'll use this for future videos. So that's basically a merry-go-round operation. And that's what still goes on today. It still goes on today. But it was basically introduced in the 70s and 80s and got really, really big with the Class 56s and the Class 58s and stuff like that. And again, I grew up with that. I saw it when I was little, and so I developed quite a love for that. And I got this book from Railfest, actually. This came from Railfest, uh, NRM, last year, 2012. And I saw this in one of the book, on one of the bookstalls there, and I just had to have it. I absolutely had to have it, because I love these merry-go-round operations. Just look at that image there. Replace the coal with M&M's. You're on to a winner. Right. Now, there's tons of stuff in this book. I don't need to go through all of it. But basically this book, you see, see that's what I'm on about. This book covers how the MGR operations worked. How the trains would come in, what type of trains they'd be. Like you can see a load of Class 56s there and maybe a 47. I don't know, the two are very, very similar. And it covers how they worked and how they operated. And it has huge track diagrams as well in places. I can't find them now, typically. But it does have massive track diagrams for the power plants, like Didcot. Um, and it shows you how the trains would come in and how they would unload automatically and then go off and load up again automatically. And it's invaluable. It's absolutely invaluable. And the reason this book is invaluable is because it's basically the Bible when it comes to the new layout, which you're going to see very soon, because this is basically the basis, the foundation. You know, this MGR thing is the rock core, the solid core of the new layout, because it has a power station in one corner and a coal mine in the other. But I'm copying that and then scaling it down 
to use on this end gauge layout. So, if I just tear off that piece of paper and I draw a rough plan of what we've got, I'll draw the room. Now, I could spend ages making up scale models and stuff, but you get to see all of that in the proper layout videos, the how to make a model way part how to make a model railway part two. So there's no need for me to cover that here as well. I'd, I'd just be copying myself, trust me, you'll see. But I'm gonna do it rough. Um, now we've got a desk here, quite a big desk. Okay, I'm drawing the way I draw so that you can see really clearly. Uh, I hope you can anyway. And then we've got another desk here, like that. And then we've got a big sweeping desk that does something like that. Okay? So that's, again, that's quite rough, but that's a plan of the room. And then the window is here. It's years since I did any um, graphic design and architecture courses and stuff, but you get the gist of this. So that's a big desk, that's the one Craig does lots of work on, and then this is the desk I do lots of work on. My computer is here, that's where the monitor goes, so I just draw that in, I'll just draw the keyboard and the mouse, and I often have my laptop here like that, and then that's the lamp. And then over on this desk we've got the printer, and then we've got this, the server, but the server's underneath, so that's okay. And then we've got Craig's monitor in the corner like that, and... That's more or less it. Oh, yeah, I've got his keyboard as well, I suppose, and speakers. Yeah, my speakers. So that's more or less what we've got to work with. And as I say, we've got to get a merry-go-round style layout ferrying suites from this side all the way around to this side. So, if I just draw that again, but don't worry, I'll cut out me drawing it. Okay, so I've drawn out another one, as you can see, just there. Now, we, as I say, we've got to do an MGR layout. So I was thinking, and this is just totally off the top of my head, okay, of having a loop of track that does something like this. See, so there's the loop, and then it curves there, and goes across here, over a bridge, onto this desk, runs all the way down this desk at the back, round the back of Craig's monitor, comes out in a big loop, goes back on itself, but a separate line, so that we can run more than one train at once, back over the bridge, again still a separate line of track, round the back of my desks, and joins up again. What about something like that? So you'd have... Um, an M&M dispenser sort of there and then you'd have like a millions dispenser there or something or the other way around, whatever and basically our MGR trains would come in pick up the M&Ms and then go back out and then back across over the gap down that desk drop them off turn back on themselves go back back across the gap back onto my desk and start the process all over again and as for control, well we could easily just put the uh, power clips on the track there and then run the wire down to a nice controller there so I've got easy access to the controller because I'll be sat I usually sit here or there in the corner so depending on where my chair is I can easily get access to the controller, you know um, the biggest problem I know is going to be this it's going to be the uh, gap going across the, well, if you turn the camera you can just see it there. That's going to be the biggest problem, but I'm pretty confident that we can overcome that. What do you think? I think that's pretty good. I think I, I, I think I should go with something like that. So how about I start putting track down straight away and get as much done as I can and then fill in the gaps with IC82 paper track. Okay, well, it's many hours later and as you can see, I have been busy, I have been busy. We now have the layout um, taking shape. Just look at this. 
Um, if I just go and get some spare... No, I'll, I'll, I'll get the spare bits in a second. Look, you can see that we've got the track going round the back of the monitor there. If I just show you... Look, and see? Now, obviously, um, it's not, like, pinned down or anything yet. Well, blue tacked down. It's not permanent. And we're going to have to do something about these cables. But you get the basic idea. And that's the train, the train that's going to come in uh, round the back. Then there's going to be a little spur that comes off where basically we'll, we'll have like a, a loco yard. And then it'll go round behind this speaker again. We're going to have to tackle the cables, but we'll tackle them, don't worry. And then all the way around here, woo, just over the edge, <laughs> all the way around. See, I've got some little wagons here just to test the track. And then, oops, I pushed too hard and derailed it. And then we're going to have to uh, lift up the really, really chunky cable to the keyboard in front of the monitor, and then it's going to go in front of the mouse between my little pot of pens and the phone, and then back over here where we've got a curve marked out where it will shoot across the desk to another curve where it will shoot across to the end of the desk and then over the big gap, across a bridge, to these two on this desk, where it will shoot off down the back, like that. Right, because I've already run out of the track I do have, um, somebody really, really cool on YouTube did a video on paper track. So, <laughs> I've gone and made a whole load of paper track, so that I can continue to um, basically make the layout but using paper track. And to show you just how good it is, this is um, a particular piece called an ST5, a set, um, well, set track 5, it's a curve, it's a right hand turnout. And you can see all the different bits of track listed here in the Pico track um, plan book. And there is an ST5. So if I just grab this ST5 and I put it where it's going to go, which is just there, like that, you can see how I'm basically building um, a loco yard. So if I get these two straights as well, ST1 and ST2, as well as some buffers, then I put them down like this. See? This is basically going to be a loco yard. So this is where I shall have a class 50 whatever part up, class 56, 58, deltic, I don't know. But this is where I will have my locomotives part up. And then they will leave this spur, go back onto the track over there. Just round there is where we'll have the power connection. And then it'll be able to come around here, collect the wagons from wherever I decide to have the wagons. I don't know, I might put another spur in for the wagons. And then off it goes all the way around the whole layout, you see? But, yeah, paper track is so good that, just imagine if I hadn't got that and I had run out, maybe, um, you just put a paper version down instead. And again, same here. This is an ST2, a really, really, ugh, really tiny one. But again, just put the, S the paper one in and look, look what happens. Isn't that cool? So basically, you end up with the ability to make a shopping list. So, if you go and get your pad of paper and your sharpie, like this, I can see that I need an ST5, so ST5 times one of them. I need an ST2, so ST2, I need one of them. Uh, straights, well, I'm going to need uh, an, a straight there, aren't I? An ST11. I'm going to need loads of ST11s down the back here. So put ST11 there, and then we'll put another uh, ST11 there, like that. And then I think we'll have the curve. Yeah, does that look okay? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So then we're going to need an ST11 there. And then we'll need another ST11. These are the double straights, by the way. And then another ST11. And finally another ST11. And then maybe the curve again. So look. Look what you end up with. You end up with the ability to make a shopping list. 
so that you get exactly the um, the components that you need. So when it comes to oh, where's my sharpie? Here we go. So when it comes to the ST11, uh, how many of them are going to need? Oh, about one thousand. <laughs> I don't know, but you get the picture, you get the idea, and that's how cool Paper Track is. But as I must point out, look, we've got to have two lots of them, because there's going to be a return loop, if you like, a return line, and an outgoing line, or the other way around. And so we're going to need two lots of everything, and then just around here will be the ramp where it'll go up over a piece of plywood or something, across a bridge, back down this ramp here, and then along the back, up here. So again, we're going to need two curves here. So that's the other curve. And then we're going to need another load of straights. But have you noticed something else? I'm using so many straights, I might as well use a lot of flexi-track. You can get N-gauge flexi-track just like you can get double O-gauge flexi-track. And I'm going to desperately, desperately need to use it for the bridge because I'm going to need to cut it to certain lengths and stuff. So, seeing as we're going to need tons to go down the back there as well, I might as well just make a rough sort of measurement as to how many meters of track, if you like, we're going to need. Divide that up by how many lengths, sorry, divide that up by the size of a piece of flexi track and then place an order. And I must also point out that these curves are ST12s. And again, if I consult the uh, track planning book here, we can have a look on the layout there and see that the ST12s are the tightest radius. And they do an ST15 and an ST17. So we could have really nice, gentle sweeping curves if we wanted to, and that would be way better, wouldn't it? Or would it? Because it might take up more room. Because it's gentler, it's a, it's a bigger curve. So, I don't know. What we'll do, I think, is we'll order some of these really big gentle curves. We'll order a few more of the tight ones. We'll order an absolute load of straights and a whole load of points so that we can put in plenty of sidings over here and we can put plenty of sidings in over that side as well. So, yeah, this shopping list is going to be really, really big. <laughs> it's going to be huge. But, um, once it's done, we can get the track ordered, and then once the track arrives, we can put it all down.